So let's get to it. Um, so a couple reminders here. Uh, that uh, while you're unmuted, we can hear everything that's going on around you. So please try to be mindful of that. So we don't have any uh, background noise that would distract us and slow us down. And uh, as required by executive order, everyone must state their name and where they are from prior to speaking. Um, during public delegations, all lines will be open for comment. Um, please wait to be called on before you speak. And when you have uh, finished speaking, please uh, mute your microphone. Uh, during each agenda item, only the board staff members and presenters will be unmuted. Only one person can speak at a time. Yeah. Members and alternates for all motions, please be sure that uh, you could say your name for the record so that we know who made the uh, motions. Um, only hosts are permitted to share the screens. And this entire meeting is automatically recorded by Zoom and um, the meeting will cease uh, when everybody uh, logs out. Yeah. Okay, so um, in addition to the agendas, I see here that there are none. Uh, public delegations. Public delegations is a time when members of the public are invited to speak to the commission about certain matters, issues, or concerns related to approved wetland permits and in-house proposals or general topics of discussion are open to comment. Agenda items, referrals, applications subject to a decision by the commission, a public hearing, or in litigation may not be discussed. Um, members of the commission will not directly answer any questions or make any comments during public delegations. Um, and as a reminder, tonight we're doing a, a public hearing, so that portion of the, um, the meeting is, is coming later. This part of the meeting is for uh, general general um, topics. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak? I have a couple people that I don't recognize, so I'm going to unmute them and ask them if they're here for the public hearing or for something else. So I have a Stephen Thomas. Um, Mr. Thomas, if you wanted to speak, um, can you let us know? Nope, we're just here for the public hearing. Okay, thank you. Um, Kate Hewitt, I think you're from the paper. Yeah, and then I have a... Yeah, Kate. I'm from the paper and I'm just here for the hearing, thanks. Okay, and then I have another individual with a phone number. Um, if you wanted to speak, if you could let us know. Okay, so... Hearing none, I think it's safe to move on. Uh, let's move to reports, communications. Mr. Gashel, do we have any communications to report? I have not at this time. Uh, zoning representative, who would have been the zoning? I went. Um, it was uh, an exciting meeting of um, a public hearing regarding the application for the zone change to the affordable housing district. The public hearing is still open. Um, Jen probably knows better than I do when the next zoning meeting is where they'll be continuing this public hearing. October 15th, next Thursday. Yep. So um, mostly they got through the applicant and a bunch of written correspondence, including our um, referral letter um, that we had worked on at the prior meeting um, and a couple of others. And then uh, there was a bit of uh, public comment and at that point it was getting kind of lengthy and the uh, hearing was continued so that uh, it could allow time for further comment and the zoning members could complete further review of all of the testimony. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, do we, you said the 15th is the next meeting? Yep, October 15th. And that's a special one that uh, was not nope. scheduled? No, okay. it's a regular meeting. Oh, it's a regular meeting. Yeah, zoning meets twice a month. Okay, so I have an old list for the, the liaison here, I think. 
Um, I'm showing. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. No, I, it, I have I have the right date. Uh, Brian Baumbach was supposed to be the zoning liaison for that night. Um, maybe we want to send an email to him and ask him if he's going to be able to attend. Is that something that uh, staff can do for us? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So let's move on. Um, ex officio, Mr. Salerno, lots of stuff to report, I'm, I'm thinking. Oh, I think we, uh, we, we got all our words in with our uh, meeting the other day. Um, so first of all, uh, thank you. Um, I thought it was a very good uh, public hearing on the POCD. Um, hopefully you guys got a lot of good comment. I apologize for the uh, amount of comments we uh, may have uh, given you, um, but um, I think the report was really good. I think it was well received and hopefully you got some, some valuable feedback. I wish you had more time. I know November is your public meeting or public hearing. Is that correct on it? Um, so um, that being said, as you know, the um, referendum for the public safety building passed. Um, so the subcommittee uh, public um, safety building subcommittee work will be passed on to the building committee. Um, and we will be tomorrow. We have a board of selection meeting where we'll um, be signing the agreement uh, with noble construction to commence the work. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. That's exciting stuff. Lots of lots of things happening here. Lots of things happening. Yep. Um, okay, so that brings us to subcommittees and uh, plan of conservation and development. Um, Michelle, would you like to speak on that? Sure. So um, many of you uh, did attend the Board of Selectmen public hearing on the 30th. Thank you for being there. As uh, Mark indicated, there was a lot of really good discussion about the plan. Uh, we'll be discussing those notes and comments at our meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. Um, and uh, as Mark also indicated, the next step will be to um, have a public hearing at this commission which we have slated for next month's regular meeting on November 10th. And uh, following that, we would vote to, on whether to adopt it and file with the state uh, by the December deadline. So um, more to come after tomorrow's uh, meeting, but um, I don't foresee any holdups. I think um, there was a lot of uh, really good consensus. Uh, again, many of you were there to witness it um, yourself. So thank you for um, attending. Uh, any, anybody have any questions, things that I haven't mentioned or, okay. And um, it's my understanding right now, the document is posted on the website in its current state, it's, it's draft state. It's a bit of an updated draft from the version that the Board of Selectmen got. They got our first cut, <laughs> a few, um, a few holes uh, plugged in the draft that's up there now. And this commission will be receiving the draft as well um, so that you have time to review it prior to our November 10th meeting. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, which brings us to chairman, myself. Uh, I really don't have much to say other than uh, just to thank everybody for volunteering their time on the POCD update and uh, also for volunteering your time to be here with us tonight uh, doing the business of the town. Uh, so thank you to everybody for that. Um, I don't really have much else right now. I, I would still like to get with town staff and try to set up some uh, training for the newer board members and even training for the existing board members. I think it's important to like review what our mandates are and you know what what it is that we are you know should be focusing on as a commission. So when things settle down a bit I would like to take that off the back burner and bring it a little more to the uh, front. Um, which brings us to acceptance of the meeting minutes. Um, we have the meeting minutes from August 4th, 2020. Do I hear a motion to approve the meeting minutes? 
or anyone? Any motion, to approve? Uh, thank you, Mr. Gordon. Uh, do I hear a second? Second the motion. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Kirk, if you remember those minutes, you tabled those minutes because there I needed to look up um, a possible error in those minutes. Oh yeah, that's right. Right. So um, for those minutes, Michelle, I'm sorry, Nicole was not here. Mm -hmm. um, and I had her down as making uh, a motion and she did not make a motion. It was okay. Michelle and Brian that made that motion. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Um, I think I think that uh, our motions can still stand, and um, I believe that we can vote on that. And thank you for doing the research there on that. Um, I'm going to do a roll call here with the with the vote. Uh, Michelle Williams, approve as amended per Sue's um, comment. Tom Fitting, oh. aye. Uh, Richard Gordon. Approve as amended. Nicole Davison. Approve as amended. Um, Mary Salvatore. Not here. She's not here. Not here. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's just you. <laughs> okay, and I approve. Uh, so let the record show that uh, meeting, meeting minutes from the, what is it, the fourth? Um, Yeah, August 4th, mm -hmm. is that right? Correct. Yep. Okay, let the record show that the meeting minutes from August 4th are approved. Okay, and then we have the meeting minutes from September 1st. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the meeting minutes of September 1st? Motion to approve. Okay, thank you, Nicole Davison. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second? I second. Uh, thank you, Rich. Gordon. I just had one comment on these while it's um, on the floor. Yes. In the subcommittee report, it indicates that we are scheduling the public hearing for the POCD on December 1st. That December 1st date is the date that we've got to get it to the state. So I did say that date as a key date, but the, the um, public hearing would be November 10th at our November regular meeting. Okay, so all right. Well, then, then the meetings as they or the meeting minutes as they are written uh, reflect what happened at the meeting, right? Correct. But, the, but but what you had said at the meeting wasn't exactly correct. No, I think um, I think that the minutes don't reflect what I said. Oh. Because I I said, but I did say the date December first in reference to that being when we had to get the. Uh, plan to the state. Okay. All right. And then, um, okay, so do we re withdraw the motion and then make the amendment and then re? I, I would if you'd like to revise the minutes. Yeah, yeah let's uh, with withdraw the motions and um, note, note the uh, note the addition uh, the uh, corrections. So, so so that would just say November 10th, that last line there. Yep. Do I hear a motion to approve the meeting minutes as amended? Motion to approve the minutes as amended. Thank you, Nicole Davidson. Uh, do I hear a second? Second to approve as amended. Uh, I don't know who that was, but- Take Rich. Rich, thank you, Rich. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's go for a vote here. Um, Michelle Williams. Aye. Thomas Fitting. Aye. Rich Gordon. Aye. Nicole Davidson. Aye. Mary is not here. And myself, aye. Let the uh, record show that we are accepting the meeting minutes as amended. Which brings us to Public hearings. We have uh, item A, constitution, continuation of application of Kristen T. Clark, PE for English Harbor Asset Management LLC owner. 
application for a four lot free subdivision of 3.8 acres zoned RU40, located at 22 and 24, Upper Kensington Drive, East Lime, Assessor's Map, 40.0, lot 22 and 23. Uh, May I proceed, Mr. Chairman? Or? Uh, who, who's speaking? It's Attorney Paul Garrity. Uh, yes. Sorry, I just wanted to ask if, if, if I could proceed, so I appreciate that. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll start by indicating that we're, we're going to ask for a continuance of the hearing tonight. I emailed uh, Mr. Gaishel earlier about this uh, in response to an email he sent, but I would like to bring the commission just up to speed uh, on where this is at and, and why we're asking for this. Um, first, having met with staff a few weeks ago, um, we've made some revisions to this. It's, and, and I think, as you know, from the last public hearing, it's a three lot subdivision, but it's now a it's a two lot line adjustment with a one lot subdivision at this point. Um, we had met with staff, Mr. Benny, Mr. Gaishel, Mr. Um, Mulholland. Mr. Benny had a number of comments which we addressed. Uh, I think Mr. Gaishel was generally on board with where we were at with this. Um, and uh, I've been trying to reach Mr. Mulholland for a couple of weeks and, and we just were able to speak today to um, to discuss some of the comments that he had, and I think he and I are on the same page with that. So this afternoon we e-filed um, the revised plans that um, we revised based on the memo from Mr. Benny and, and from Mr. Gaishel um, that were ready earlier a couple of weeks ago, but we were waiting to just make sure we had one last, we, we had all the uh, knots tied so that we didn't have to revise the plans again. Um, you may also be aware we met with Ledgelight. Um, they had some recommendations in terms of some additional test pits on the properties uh, on three lots. Those were all done. That information is being compiled and we should have the revise. We, we have the plans uh, and they'll be, they'll be submitted to Ledgelight directly this week and I'll e-file um, a set of those plans with the town as well. Um, but staff obviously hasn't and Ledgelight hasn't had a chance to review the updated information on the septic. So um, we're asking for the continuance so they can do that. And when you, we come in for the final uh, hearing on this or the final continuance, um, you'll have their approval on that, which we fully expect to get based on the uh, test pit data and the meeting with Ledgelight. And we can then proceed to close the public hearing. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Mr. Gaishel, do you have some comments that you'd like to make to, uh, as, as far as getting uh, reviewing this? And Gary, you're muted. All right, thank you, Kirk. Yeah. Um, I thought I unmuted. Uh, I was just gonna note that we have one item uh, that Mr. Garrity, he may have already mentioned because my computer crashed. Uh, exhibit, I believe it was X or Y, I'm sorry. Exhibit Y, uh, which was submitted today, included an email and um, the plans. Um, but obviously, as we heard, we just heard, it sounds like Mr. Garrity's asking for continuance of the public hearing which we do have in the record already, uh, a letter requesting the full 65 days. So the commission is aware um, in terms of the timing that would bring us uh, um, to, we opened the public hearing on July 27, 2020 and 65 days out brings us to November 4th. Um, so we'd actually have to schedule a, a continued meet, a special meeting somewhere between now and November 4th. Um, I was initially, my math was, was off a little bit. I was thinking the 30th, but that's not going to work. Um, I believe October 27th is a Tuesday, uh, but Mr. Gary is indicating like next week they may have this. So it's a, obviously we need to make sure we have a quorum. Um, but other than that, that's all I have at well, this time. And the other thing is I, I would like to know for sure that we're going to have all the information that we would have and that everybody would have a chance to review it and you know because that 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 really seems to be one of the things that's uh, been slowing this down is like we're waiting on paperwork from ledge health district that um normally i i would have i would have liked to have seen that with the uh initial application i think uh, but anyway so 
um, just as a, a matter of uh, scheduling. So we, we're, we're talking about November 4th being the end of the, the 65 days, right? Correct. Um, and we have an election on the third. The third. So I don't want to do that. Um, the Tuesday before that is. I believe October 27th. Yes, it is October 27th. Okay, so that would give us three full weeks mm -hmm. in order to get whatever other information that we would need from Ledgelite Health District. Is there any other pieces that are outstanding, Gary, as far as um, things? Not at this time. Um, as you heard, Mr. Garrity, there was you know some discrepancy with Mr. Mulholland's comments. They've discussed it. Um, I've been a privy to one of those meetings. Um, and at that, the, the initial meeting with the applicant, it looked like those comments were addressed. Um, so the only thing left outstanding is a favorable review by the, the health district. Okay. So I figure within three weeks, if they don't have something in like three weeks, that, that would be a really long time. Uh, just as a, for the other commission members, would everybody be able to support a meeting, say the week, let's say um, maybe something like the 27th? Does anybody have any conflicts? Say on October 27th? Works for me. Okay, so that would be Michelle said okay. Uh, it works for me as well. Thank you, Nicole. Rich and Tom. Uh, yeah, I should double checking, but I, I think it looks like it's okay. It should be okay. fine. Okay. Not good. Okay. So uh, we have a, um, a, a request to continue the public hearing, and um, I think procedurally we just need a motion to continue, or. Gary, Gary, what is what is procedural? Uh, what what do you what do we so, need? To... So Kurt, yeah, you would just make a motion to continue to a specific date. Okay, so we are all in agreement that uh, October twenty seventh is a reasonable date. Uh, do I hear a motion to continue the public hearing till the twenty seventh? So moved, Michelle Williams. Thank you, Mich Michelle. Uh, do I hear a second? I second. All right, we got a dead tie. All right, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll yield to Nicole. Ho hopefully, we don't have one November third. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for hanging chad. Um, okay, so all right. Uh, any further discussion? Um, okay, so let's let's vote. Um, we'll go down the list again. Michelle. Aye. Um, Thomas Fitting? Uh, aye. Richard Gordon? Aye. Nicole Davidson? Aye. And myself? Aye. Uh, let the record show that we are going to continue the public hearing to October 27th at 7 o'clock uh, here on Zoom. So uh, thank you everybody for showing up. Um, and we will definitely talk to you then. Uh, so all the people that are here for the public hearing, we, we are no longer going to discuss anything related to this uh, item tonight. Um, so mark your calendars for October 27th at 7 o'clock. Uh, and we'll be right here on Zoom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Okay, so that moves us down to uh, we have a zoning referral. Um, it is a petition of Paz and Construction LLC to rezone 20.24 acres from RU40. I'm sorry, RU80 slash RU40, its existing zoning designation to avoid affordable health district and for approval of preliminary site plan, which proposes 80 unit multifamily affordable housing 
affordable residential housing development designated as Brookside Apartments for a property identified on the westerly side of North Bradbrook Road in East Lyme, East Lyme Assessor's Map 09.0, uh, Lot 37.2, pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes S, uh, Section 830G. So, uh, Mr. Gaishel, can you give us a little background about what what this project is and what we are, um, what our charge is tonight? Certainly. Um, so the referral comes under the uh, zone change um, application. And in this case, the applicant did not formally apply for a zone change. They applied under the statute 8-30G and just submitted a site plan. Um, we've been advised by council to handle the application just as if we would any other affordable housing application, which is typically accompanied by a zone change, thus the referral. Um, so that said, uh, your charge tonight would be to review that referral and determine whether or not it's consistent with the plan of development or, or not. Um, I wrote a memo to the uh, zoning official and the zoning commission um, regarding my review uh, prior to it coming to this commission uh, for review. Um, obviously that was not put on the website and I'd be happy just to read that into the record. Um, yes, if you would, please. Thank you. So memorandum to William Mulholland Zoning Official, East Lyme Zoning Commission, and East Lyme Inland Wetland Agency uh, was from myself, dated September 29, 2020, regarding the multifamily affordable housing application, North Bridebrook Multifamily Development, application of PAS and Construction LLC, an eight-sheet plan set entitled North Bridebrook Multifamily Development, prepared for PAS and Construction LLC, dated 9-25-19, revised through 7-10-20, sheets one through eight. Upon review of the above reference application and the proposed plans entitled North Brybrook Multifamily Development, prepared for passing construction LLC, sheets one of eight, dated 9-25-2019 and revised through 7-10-2020 by Brandon J. Hanfield, PE of Yantic River Consultants, LLC of 191 Norwich Avenue, Lebanon, Connecticut. I offer the following. One, there is no direct impact on the wetlands or water course as all the construction activities will be conducted outside the 100 foot upland review area from any inland wetland and or water courses. Therefore, there are no irreversible and irretrievable loss of wetlands and water courses, which would be caused by the proposed regulated activity, as there is none. Um, two, the project has been designed to protect the wetlands and water courses as the building structures, driveways, and drainage structures are designed to be situated outside of the wetlands and the 100 foot upland review area, as well as all the public utilities, sewer, water, electrical, et cetera. Three, mitigation members, measures to minimize and mitigate potential impacts from the creation of new impervious surfaces on the site and to protect the wetlands and water courses and the groundwater, such as stormwater management structures, catch basins, and the retention pond will pre-treat and control runoff and promote groundwater recharge. Four, potential impacts during construction are proposed to be mitigated by the implementation of temporary erosion sedimentation controls, as well as stormwater controls throughout all phases of construction. Five, the upland review process does not forbid activity based solely on proximity to wetlands. Rather, the upland review process merely provides a basis for determining whether activities will have an adverse impact on the adjacent wetland or water course, and if necessary, regulating them. As demonstrated by the North Brybrook Multifamily Development Stormwater Management Report prepared in accordance with the 2004 Connecticut Stormwater Quality Manual, verifies that the proposed detention pond attenuates peak flow rates and volumes as compared to pre-development conditions resulting in net zero increase in runoff from the development for the two through 100 year storm events. Six, the proposed detention pond will enhance stormwater runoff quality and recharge the groundwater. The stormwater from the closed drainage system will enter a sediment floor bay, which is separated from the detention basin by a quote, detention filter berm, end quote, before passing through the semi-pervious filter berm into the detention basin itself. Uh, seven, the ENS narrative and construction details provide construction notes and long-term maintenance plan for the stormwater detention basin. Moreover, the erosion sedimentation control plan was prepared in accordance with 2002 Connecticut guidelines for soil and erosion, for soil erosion and sediment control, Connecticut deep, and includes a narrative construction sequence and vegetative turf establishment procedures. Uh, eight, after having, most of this is not applicable and maybe I can, I'm almost there. Uh, the last comment that I had uh, which is applicable is in regards to the project's location. The underlying zoning district is RU80 and RU40 rural residential districts, and the property is located approximately one mile from the I-95 exit 72 
Rocky Neck Connector. And with only 15 single family dwellings to the north and Gate State Correctional Facility to the east, facility to the east and direct, it direct, also directly abuts to the south approximately 35 acres of vacant land owned by the Connecticut State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection and is located within an existing and affordable housing district associated with a 108 unit sea spray condominium complex. So in addition, there are approximately 60 single family dwellings located to the south of the site within the R10 residential and the CA commercial districts. Currently, public transportation is not available in the area, nor are there any public sidewalks along North Bridebrook Road. So that, that was my comments in regards to the location of the site. Um, and you can use that as you will, um, as you make your determination or not. Um, you, have, you can comment. Uh, we are having a, a special meeting. When was the public hearing again for this, Jen? Should be in the file. I believe it's November 5th. November 5th. So with a special meeting on October 27th, uh, we could, if you wanted to comment, um, it would give us time to put it on that agenda as well and draft an additional memo. Yes, it's November 5th. Okay, so that's the, in a nutshell, what they want. Uh, you said there's 80 units. There's, uh, how many buildings are, are we looking at? Do they, did they uh, have like a site plan or? Yeah, they, they do. Um, Just had my mouse on that. How many buildings? Uh, is it up on the? Uh, Goes up to J. Ten, <laughs> no. there's, there's ten buildings. Okay. Um. So it's in a ten buildings, with, eighty with, units. Eighty units. All right. Ten buildings, eight units a building, on twenty acres. Uh. trying to think of some questions to ask about this. Uh, any of my fellow commission members here have any questions or comments or anything that they would like to know about this project? I thought that the um, attachment listed for us was uh, pretty meaty. I would welcome having more time to look through it if we decide that we can draft the motion at our October 27th meeting that we just scheduled. Um, nothing really stood out to me in my initial review of it. Um, I mean, it would certainly give me time as staff to craft a motion, at least something to give you a jumping off point with uh, between now and then, and you would have that at your, your October meeting and you could pull from it as you wish. It may make things easier for everyone all around. Yeah, and uh, I'm sorry, I missed the date for the public hearing and for the... Uh... November 5th is when zoning will hear this again. Okay. Or actually hear it for the first time. Yeah, I'm just, the only, the only concern I have with waiting is I, I just want, you know, whatever input that we have on this to not get lost in the shuffle. So I just want to... That, that would be my only comment about waiting or not waiting. They right. can't review our input until the 5th though, right? Correct. Unless you submit something in writing, in which case it becomes part of the record and it could potentially go to the members before, just okay. like you get stuff before. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I, I don't know. I don't see any harm with tabling this. Uh, if, if, does anyone else have any uh, preference one way or the other. Um, staff, do you feel like uh, Mr. Gaishul, Ms. Lindo, do you feel that uh, waiting and uh, taking it up at our next meeting would be a reasonable? That's, that's fine with me. I would think that it would give you all an opportunity. I can always post Gary's um, 
memo that he did that he sent to staff and then you could all read that and have a uh, I think abbreviated version. Okay. That and uh, we could look at the, the plan layout. I mean, on its surface, I, I don't know, like looking at looking at this, looking at the description here and knowing what I know about the POCD, I'm just, I'm not sure um, how this would go against the POCD. So I don't know, I don't know if even the given, given the extra time, how, how much of, of a difference it would make in my decision. Yeah, I, I could see that too. I mean, cause like we always talk about, yes, we need affordable housing. We need it in the right place. Um, uh, there's already affordable housing over there. Yeah, there's no, there's no um, public transportation, but there's no public transportation to the other affordable housing that's over there either, right? I mean, so right. I don't know if that, that to me was the only thing that stuck out as I was looking at this, you know, right now, uh, that was the only thing that really stuck out that would make it a difficulty. And that's not even a really strong argument against doing this kind of thing um especially since there's already one over there that falls into that um that case so i don't know i mean i i would just note that you know the, the land is zoned residential so it's going to be a tough you know i think go in terms of you know saying you can't put residential units in a residential zone yeah um, you know, especially when the zones are 40, whereas, you know, unlike something like Oswegatchie Hills, which is R120, and it's, it's really dictating the density to be much less. So, uh, but again, that that's something that, you know, we can comment on to zoning and let them know that, hey, we're concerned about maybe the density here. Um, but I, again, I don't know really, you know, my experience, how well that holds up in court. Um, Right. Well, even, and let me ask you this then, I mean, like they're, they're, they're giving us this as a zoning referral, but it's not really a zoning referral. We're, we're charged with treating it like it's a zoning referral. So if we treat it like a zoning referral and we say it's inconsistent, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just trying to think through the logic of, of, uh, you know, if for some reason we did find a way to, you know, say that it's not consistent, that would still, they would, that would just mean that they would have to, oh wait, the zoning, it's not even going to zoning, is it? No, it is. It oh, does it is. go to zoning. Zoning has to go to public hearing and, and review it and approve the site plan. I'm and, sorry. And, and the zone change. What they would need is we found it inconsistent, just a majority vote to, to pass it, which right. they need anyway. So, um, Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah, so it, it goes to zoning and it kind of, since it's being applied as an 830G, it kind of trumps the zoning regulation. So it's up to the uh, zoning commission ultimately to determine uh, if it's appropriate. I do have a, a question maybe for Mark as former chair. How many applications do you recall were like this or did you ever get any like this without an application for a zone change? Usually we had both. We had an application for a zone change and an application for the right. affordable housing. So this is coming in as one. Just, just as like, here's one application for a site plan under the statute. Um, without a zone change? Without the zone change. Under Wisniewski, and we've only had two other applications that came in under Wisniewski. Um, one was the landmark application from 2015, and the other was the um, Rocky Neck what's now Rocky Neck, but was before JAG Capital Drive. Those were the two prior applications that came in under Wisniewski without a separate zone change application. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Yep. Hmm. All right, so, I mean, I guess we could, if you wanna vote on whether we table this or I, I don't, honestly, it doesn't matter to me if we table this. Um, so, uh, somebody could somebody could jump in with a motion to table it. That would be okay. Or, or I uh, procedurally, do we need a motion to table it? No, I mean 
it's only if you want to comment on it. I mean, or you can comment tonight. If you have no comment, then there'd be no comment. Uh, my suggestion would be at a minimum. I suspect looking at those other two, I believe we did comment on them. Yeah. Um, well, it, would so not I, be, it would not be uh, fitting our pattern of always having a comment, you know, because we do, we do always consider everything that it comes before us and, and try to do a thoughtful uh, review and, you know, so, okay, let's, let's table this. Let's say it's tabled. Come back to it on October 27th. Yes. We'll table till October 27th. And um, that'll, that'll give us uh, more, more good stuff to do on October 27th. Um, so I think that would bring us to municipal referrals, which is none. And new business. Uh, we have an application of Carol York, owner, application for one lot subdivision of approximately 1.4 acres of land zoned R12 and request for waivers from section 7-2-1, 6-12-2, 6-8, 5-2-2, 92 Old Black Point Road, East Lyme Assessor's Map, 08.3, Lot 132. Okay, so what? So, so this is the easy one tonight with a lot of all those waivers. Um, this, the application is for a subdivision. Normally it wouldn't require a public hearing, but because of the waivers, it automatically has to go to a public hearing. That said, uh, we can't have any dis further discussion tonight. Uh, but we do set the public hearing. Um, our next regular scheduled meeting is November 10th. Yeah. Uh, which we kind of set aside for the plan of development. Again, it is a one lot resubdivision. I mean, who knows how much public participation would be had or wanted or involved. I, it's hard to say, but we could couple it with the public hearing on the POCD um, or with the meeting coming up on the 27th with three weeks we could theoretically schedule it then. Um, but there'd be a lot of work, I think, to do between now and then for staff. Yeah. Uh, it only gives two weeks to review. Yeah. I think that we should uh, go ahead and, and set the schedule for our next uh, regular. regular meeting. Okay. Um, I know that kind of cuts into our POCD uh, time. And uh, Jerry, just so you know, Carol is here. Okay. I know it's not on video. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that would be the normal course. I mean, with this is new business that, you know, we would bring it up and then we would schedule it for our, normally we would schedule it for our, our next regular meeting. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking okay. let's schedule it for the uh, next regular meeting, which is the November 10th, November the POCD. 10th. Yeah, okay. I mean, the, the other option is going all the way to December, but I thought that's an awfully long time to wait. Uh, yeah, so please don't make me wait that long. I've got someone uh, that wants to buy my house and I really want to get going on this. Yeah, so we're, we're going to... 27th of October if possible, but I know if you can't, I'd love November. Um, so November works. Yeah. We can put that, but we can put her public hearing before the POCD public hearing on the agenda. Um, yeah, it, we can set the agenda in any order we really want to. But yeah, we could do we could do that. Get it out of the way. I think that's reasonable. So okay. let's let's do that. Okay. Um. So we'll set a public hearing for November 10th. November 10th it is. It sounds good. All right. There we have uh, it. And there we have it. So that, that's all the action that would happen tonight, Carol. So. All right. I will see you guys again on November 10th.
Thank you very much. Yes, Thank you. we will see you then. Have a good night. You, you too. too. Thank you. Which brings us to um, adjournment. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I think the motion to adjourn, Rich Gordon. All right, Rich, you came in first this time. Do I hear a second? Second emotion. Mr. Fitting, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? I, the only thing I really have is uh, thank you all for uh, everything and uh, let's, let's, any other discussion? Let's jump to a vote. Um, so, Michelle? Aye. Aye, okay. Mr. Fitting? Aye. Uh, Richard Gordon? Aye. Nicole Davison? Aye. And myself, Kirk Scott? Aye. Uh, let the uh, record show at 7.50, uh, we are adjourning. And a special note, this, this might be a record for the <laughs> fastest meeting ever. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Rita Palazzo had one that was like 12 minutes. Oh, oh yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> we're going to do that. We are going to, we're going to get there. That's probably going to be the next two. Work. No, it's not. We're all going to have to get a good night's rest before those next two meetings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. All right.